Hey, if I told you we were about to talk to uh, a great musical performer who, in his own right, has come up with all kinds of million-selling albums, including the greatest selling holiday album of all time, and yet he's also worked with some of the biggest names in the business like Aretha Franklin and Whitney Houston and Natalie Cole. Who would you guess it is? Uh, Elton John? It's, it's Kenny G. Oh, oh. hey. <laughs> yeah, it is you. I, I would have said Elton John or, or, or Paul McCartney. <laughs> yeah. How are you, Kenny? I'm doing great. I, I'm, I'm excited. Today's the day my album's released called Paradise, so it's it's a very exciting day for me that I wish I could stretch out and make last for like 50 or 60 hours instead of really? 24. Now, how much time do you spend putting an album together? Oh, man, I'm telling like you. Something like this. Years. Really? Years, yeah. yeah. I, I Believe me, I wish I could just whip it together in a couple of weeks. And, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I take everything so personally, and every because I, I write my music, and I, I produce, and so every note, every drum part, every keyboard part, every string part, every saxophone line, it's got to just be all, you know... Yeah. I'm like the director of a movie. Every every little every process has to go through me, and right. and I have to put my stamp on it. Well, we uh, were talking to uh, James Taylor on the show just the other day, and he was saying that about 50% of his new album, October Road, came when he was just out walking around through the neighborhood there yeah, but, in New England. How, yeah, does it, he, how does it happen for you? He, he's a genius. You know, he's, he's a genius. <laughs> it doesn't happen. I got to work harder for it than that. I'm, I have to go into my yeah. studio and work on my stuff. But for him, well, he's 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 in a different level than me. Yeah, but I've added up the millions and millions that you've sold. You've done pretty well. How does it? How do the? How do the tunes come to you? Uh, you know, I, I, I play my saxophone and, and I start blowing and and a couple of notes start a melody and then they continue. Or I'm playing with my keyboard player friend and, that I work with and he plays something that inspires me. Or uh -huh. I don't know. It's really hard okay. to say. But but somehow these these songs come together and and then. You know, after a while, they, they become good enough to be on my CDs. There's a lot of songs that I do that they're just right in the, in the garbage can. Hey, you know, I want our audience, since you've got a lot of fans here in Arizona, to know a little bit more about you. Your real name is Kenneth Gorlick. You actually, uh, your first real professional gig was playing with Barry White's Love Unlimited Orchestra. That's right. That is now, right. When, when did you start playing, and where were you growing up when you were playing uh, the saxophone? I well, I grew up in Seattle, mm -hmm. uh, went through the public school system, and... and when Barry White came through Seattle, my high school band teacher somehow knew the guy that was uh, getting all the musicians to, to, to back him up because they, they brought a rhythm section, but they needed horns. And, and he um, thought that I would be the perfect guy to play with Barry White's uh, band during that weekend. And that's how I got my first professional start. And that must have been so cool. What was it like working with Barry White? Well, you know, I was 17. I, I was, you know, 10, 12 years younger than everybody else in, that, in, in the group. So I was a little scared. Uh, I wasn't sure I could handle the gig. You know, it's, it's a lot of sight reading. You've got to read the music, mm -hmm. play, play, improvise. Uh, you know, and then first time actually like being on a big stage in a professional atmosphere. I, I was excited and nervous. And, and uh, although I got, a lot of, uh, I got a lot of solos and Barry White turned around and gave me like, gave me nice accolades during the concert. So That's great. I went back to high school as a big hero that, on Monday because a lot of my friends went to the concert. So... You know, it, it really did change my life. Uh, now, few people way. know that you went to the finest institution of uh, higher education anywhere in the world, the University of Washington. Why, well, you, why you must have went there. I'm a Husky, too. All right, well, <laughs> that's right. I went to the University of Washington, um, graduated in accounting. And See, now, that's the thing. I thought you would have gone for music, but you went to be an accountant. Well, you I didn't played... think the music gig was going to exactly work. Huh? No, no, no. It wasn't about a gig. It was just mainly I, I, I played in the, music, uh, in, the, in the music band. I played in the jazz band, and I was gigging all the time. I mean, I was playing clubs, and I was playing shows during my college days, but the st I, I had to find something to study. I didn't want to study music because I didn't want anything to take away the beauty. I mean, I just do it naturally, and it's organic. Yeah. I don't want to actually know that I'm playing a C minor 7 chord that goes to an A, you know, what? I don't want to know that. I just want to know that, hey, this sounds good to me, and then that's as far as I need to know. Well, we need to get you out at halftime in one of these Husky football games. That would be the thing to do. I have never it? played uh, at the halftime of a Husky that game, never done it. That would be the thing to do. Hey, all right, we just came up with a great idea. Kenny G, congratulations on the new album. As you say, it's just now out. It's called Paradise. Look for yep. it in stores, and we'll talk to you soon. Okay, thanks, man. Bye.